one thing batteries are really good for. That one there reckons it's 12 volts. And on the label, it says it can do 480 amps. We're going to have a look at the basics of electricity batteries today. But we're going to do it without the background noise of the car running. Okay, so electricity, the basic quantity of electricity, the fundamental quantity is charge. In mechanics, mass is the fundamental quantity. How much matter have we got? In electricity, it's charge. How much electricity have we got? For charge, we can use the symbol capital Q or little q interchangeably. The unit for charge is coulombs, and the symbol for coulombs is a capital C. Now when we looked at that battery in the car there, it claimed to be a 12 volt battery. What's voltage mean? Voltage, symbol V, is measured in volts. The symbol for volts is also V. That makes it really easy. The definition of voltage is the amount of work done per unit charge. How much energy is carried by each coulomb of charge and that energy isn't just carried but it's used to do work somewhere in our circuit. We can write that down mathematically. Look, V is change in energy delta E over Q, charge. So that's what voltage is. That 12 volt battery probably actually drops down to about 7 or so volts when you're cranking the motor over because it's not a perfect battery, it's got resistance inside it and as that huge current is dragged across the resistance some of the 12 volts drops on that resistance just trying to make the current flow through it. You'll find that batteries get warm after they're running, that's because of that heat that's being dissipated by the resistance inside the battery, the internal resistance. Now current. That battery says 480 CCA. CCA stands for cold cranking amps and they put that on car batteries to let you know how much charge your battery can deliver per second on a cold morning. When I read up on it, that battery is meant to be able to sustain 480 amps for 30 seconds at a low temperature. Current, we use the symbol capital I. The unit for current is amperes, though we usually just say amps. The symbol for that is capital A. Now current is the rate of flow of charge past a fixed point in a circuit. That means how much charge passes a fixed point in a circuit every second. Once again, we can write it mathematically. I is Q upon T. We know Q is charge and T is time. And I is current. Now current. Back in history, when we were investigating the very first fundamentals of electricity using batteries on frogs legs and noticing that they moved, we hypothesized that current was a flow of positive charges that came out of the positive terminal of the battery and went around the circuit and into the negative terminal of the battery. However, we got it wrong. We didn't bet on there being electrons that have a negative charge. But conventional current, we still draw it like they used to draw it back in the day going from positive to negative. But, in the back of our minds, we're always remembering that the actual charge carrying particles are electrons and they flow from the negative around to the positive, the opposite way to what we draw current flowing. Electron charge is just tiny. Look, charge of an electron is negative 
1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19 coulombs. That's infinitesimally small. And so to make one coulomb of charge, we need an absolutely ginormous number of electrons. That battery reckons it can deliver 480 coulombs of charge every second. And it's meant to be able to sustain that for 30 seconds. That's just a phenomenally large number of electrons that are flowing out one terminal of the battery, around the circuit, and back into the other terminal. An absolutely enormous number of electrons. Now often, when you're buying a battery, they will tell you how much charge is contained in the battery. And the way they do that is with a measurement of amp hours or milliamp hours. And that's so that you know how long your battery is going to be able to sustain current for. Now, of course, the manufacturer of the battery can't know how much current you're going to be demanding from their battery, and so they can't know exactly how much time it's going to be used for. The way they get around that is with this unit of amp hours, or milliamp hours, the time being an hour, 3,600 seconds, that's 60 times 60, and so that's a measure of how much current a battery can sustain for one hour. That's the same as charge. If we rearrange this equation, Q equals IT, charge is current times by time, amps times by hours, milliamps times by hours, that gives us charge. And so if you want to buy a battery that's got more charge, you read the label on the side and see one's, which one has got the most milliamp hours inside it. Now we can have a think about how much energy this battery is delivering every second. How much power this battery is delivering. And the way we can do that is looking at the voltage, which is change in energy per charge and the current which is charge per time if we multiply those two equations together the charge on the bottom cancels with the charge on the top and we're just left with energy per time and we know that that's power look I've written it out for you here P equals IV delta Q upon T times delta E upon Q the Q's cancel and we're left with energy over time. So when we're doing electricity, the easy way of calculating power is IV, and that's why it works. How much power is that battery delivering? Say the voltage drops down to 7 volts, and it's delivering 480 amps. Let's call it 500, just for ease of calculation. We're talking at around about 3,500 joules per second that that battery is delivering. It's good to remember that your average little uh, fan heater that you run to warm your knees up, those things are about 2,000 watts, 2,000 joules per second. And so that battery is delivering almost twice the power that a fan heater is delivering. That's quite an impressive amount of power. Batteries.